Going live, going live. Check, check, check. Can you hear us? Site42 fam, are we live? Make sure that you are using your encrypted YouTube to access us. Do not use your public-facing account, Steve. We are digitizing our signal. We are going live in three, two, one. Ladies and gentlemen, Foundation staff, this is Sherm, and we are now anomalously broadcasting from Site42. For anybody unfamiliar with our show, the rundown goes like this. One, I read you an SCP document, or tale, or something like that. B, I open up the floor to the community to discuss what we've read. We're often visited by SCP authors, staff, and fans, and if we're lucky, the author of the article themselves shows up to share some insight. Remember that if you would like to join the conversation yourself, I will be monitoring the chat in between chapters and answering questions, as will my guest. Also remember that if you enjoy the show, leave a like and comment to let us know, subscribe and hit the bell, and if you really want to help us out, become a patron at patreon.com slash site42. A small bit of channel business that I just want to tell you guys about before we get to the main show tonight. Site42 now has a P.O. box. I'm going to put this envelope in front of the screen, and the reason that this is here so that you can read it is if you want to sell us... Sell us? Don't sell us things. What are you doing? If you want to send things to Site42. Things like this little guy who showed up in the mail this week. This, created by Ghostly Crafts, is Tiny Felt Sherm. And he's adorable. And he's hanging out with us on the stream today. He is going to hang right here in my shirt. No, that's not going to work. Tiny Felt Sherm, yes, there. I'm just going to set him aside. He can, he can hang out under the camera. He's there in spirit. But yes, if you would like to send Site42 a thing to have it shown on the s stream... You can do that now. You just have to go back and get the address from the envelope I held up. Now, with all of that adunus gone, it is time for us to welcome our guest for the evening, Dark Stuff. Dark Stuff going live now. Hello. Hello. How was your week, mi amigo? My week was very good. Excuse me, there's something with that. <clears throat> Perfect there timing. My week was very good. Yeah, I wish that could have happened slightly earlier when I was still muted. Tonight um, we are I going to be reading... Went... Oh. oh, go ahead. What'd you do? I was just going to say, you asked me about my week. I just was going to say, I went to the river um, this today, and we the first two spots were a bust, and it was almost a terrible river experience. And But then it wasn't. That's, the, that's my entire day. Yes. <laughs> Exciting, I know. <laughs> it could have been bad, but it wasn't. It could have been bad, but it wasn't. That's there's some moral there or something. Well, it works perfectly in line with the name of tonight's tale. Everything will be okay. <gasps> That's true. Also, I sent you a Discord message, which I see that you didn't receive. You have the wrong Vendafriend logo up currently. Oh, do I? Yeah, it's, it's it should be. Um, I am gonna fix that right now because I have that power. I do. I do. All I have to do good, is good. go over here. And I go to the pictures, and I pull up the file, and I drag mm -hmm. and drop, and this is logo ping, and so if I do copy and replace, pop! Perfect change. I haven't seen it because the stream is delayed, but I imagine that it's good, and I have no more preamble. You can believe in me. Believe in me. Awesome. Perfect. All right, so we got the right logo. Everything will be okay. Mm -hmm. Chapter 14, the penultimate chapter of Vendafriend. We're almost there. All right, let's see where we're going with this. Mm-hmm. Going mute now. Three T stood around with a cup of Dreamcatcher chamomile, TM, making small talk with the other toy tinkers before the big presentations. This month's were sure to be amazing. 3T was especially excited for Brainy's newest and zaniest invention yet. Today, he was going to unveil his big, sugary, aquatic-themed product. And 3T was positive the crowd, and more importantly, the overseers, were going to love it. Sidebar, did Wondertainment have overseers? That's, it's not a capital overseer. It's just coincidence. Okay, continuing. The large spiral spattered... 
splattered. The large spiral splattered doors led to the naturally lit, well, as natural as you can get with a world where nigh everything, including the sun, was artificial, business theater, where today's presentations would happen. The seats were numerous enough to hold the entire company's employees, and each department got their own designated and color-coded section. The toy tinkers, for obvious reasons, took the front seats when the business theater was used for the toy presentations. It was spectacular. It was theatrical. And more importantly, it was what determined the next month's batch of new projects. Every toy tinker spent every month preparing for these presentations, unless they were still working on producing an accepted toy model from the previous month. The waiting room was ginormous, and shuddered as the Fright Light roller coaster flew past. 3T was understandably a little bit nervous. He couldn't imagine his measly project, the paint wand, to stand up to the giants of the industry. I mean, he couldn't even thought up a very good name for it. Paint wand. It was just named what it was. Who cared if you could point to anything and change its color? But something caught his eye. From across the excited crowd of aspiring toy tinkers, 3T saw Polly Gary Ashley looking absolutely miserable next to the hippo-shaped cold water dispenser. She looked like she had just learned of a death in her family. 3T, empathic as always, couldn't just let her sit here alone. 3T moseyed across the crowd, making it a point to avoid all the gag tiles that squeaked when you stepped on them. Polly seemed to notice him coming, and only began shaking more. Finally, they were in distance to speak above the crowd's thrum of conversation. What's got you down, Polly? She avoided eye contact. Polly, I'm here to talk. It's about the presentations. Oh, don't worry too much about the presentations. They're easy, Polly. People don't judge you so hard. Even if you don't win, you don't really lose. They're pretty easy, Polly. They're easy. No, that's not the problem. 3T frowned. What's the problem? The piano plant. What about it? Polly stared at her feet and fondled the sweating glass of water in her left hand. I promised you I'd change it. No one had seen Polly since the day they heard that Brainy died three weeks ago. They didn't even show up to Brainy's funeral, nor the funeral for the kids. After they found the burnt-down tourist trap and the charred remains of children, Brainy and... Dolls? The day after Brainy had come to Thomas Timothy Thompson in a dream. Only Percy knew of that, because 3T didn't know the point in sharing. Either no one would believe him, or... Or what? What could they possibly do with that information? In any case, 3T didn't want to share with everyone. It was his experience. It was his alone. Except with Percy Pinwheel. He shared everything with Pinwheel. He even moved in with her just recently. Currently, he was drafting up his next toy. Paint Wand had understandably not been accepted. He did have his own, and it was fun but it just didn't have the grandeur that Wondertainment seemed to be looking for recently. Unfortunately, however, 3T expected this next presentation to be low energy. Nothing had been the same since Brainy left. The toy creation department had been quieter, solemner, sulkier, worse, dull. Some of the passion had been lost. All of Wonderworld TM had been taking a long time to get over it. Some people were quicker than others to be happy again. Some people still couldn't handle that something so horrendous had ever happened. Especially not from here. Not birthed from the womb of Wondertainment. It was just wrong. 3T was one of those people. So any distraction was welcome. And here came one now. The apartment complex's soft buzzer sound came above the many fans and pinwheels that littered Percy's apartment. 3T sat up. The buzzer came again. 3T pushed the unfinished, perhaps unstarted was more accurate, toy blueprints off of his lap and onto the coffee table. He carefully dodged taut wires to make his way over to the elevator and pressed the button to establish two-way communication with the person at the buzzer on the ground floor. 
This is Thomas Timothy Thompson living with Percy Pinwheel in her apartment. Who is this? Ashley! Polly Gary Ashley! The Polly Gary Ashley that hadn't been seen in three weeks? Wait, that was a narrator, but uh, it was in his brain. Ashley! Yeah, can, can I come in? Yes! Oh, oh my, yes you can! Come up now! Three twee... Three twee? The tweeest of twees. Three twees. Three T quickly flipped the tiny blue switch that allowed the elevator to stop at their apartment, and then rushed to the nearby bathroom, nearly tripping, to run his hair underwater. Do you have any idea who Percy's voice was? I don't remember Percy's voice. Okay, so we have high voice, Brainy Brian is Polly, girl Brainy, essentially. And we have 3T, who's the dumb one. He's very smart for whip, though. And then Percy. Percy Pinwheel. Pinwheel. I'm going to give her a lower voice to distinguish her from Polly Gary. So. And I'm not going to team girl squad this one. I'm not going to team girl squad this one. I'm not sure. It's really stuck in my throat. I can feel... I can feel the want to do the thing. No, don't and I do don't it. want that voice again. But don't it's creeping do that up. That uh, is, it's an overused voice. Yep. You do it very well, but it kind of hurts. We need to diversify here. Diversify your portfolio, please. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? That, that's just my end. Who's there, T? Who's there, T? Who's there, T? Who's there, T? Oh, there we go. Sweet. Who's there, T? It's Ashley. Polly Gary Ashley? Yes. Oh, my. I'll put on a pot of water. The elevator dinged. As the door slid open, an unsightly mess was revealed. Ashley looked and smelled as if she hadn't changed clothes or bathed in an indeterminate amount of time. Their soulless pajama slippers, gray lint written gray lint-ridden sweatpants, and unnaturally brownish pink tank top were almost enough to distract from their face. But unfortunately, nothing could really do that. Their round red nose was their round red nose was noticeably dented. Eyeliner had streaked down their cheeks at some point in the past week. Bags under their eyes were nothing like 3T had ever seen. I think that the bags under their eyes? Bags under their eyes were like nothing 3T had ever seen. And that's saying something seeing as 3T had insomnia. Their lips were cracked like old pottery, their hair matted and unkempt. When Percy saw them, she startled. Dear me! She rushed over to Ashley and practically pulled them out of the elevator. Sit on the couch, honey, and stay there. Do you need a bath? Before Ashley could answer, I'm going to go draw you one. And your hair, we're going to comb that. T, get the brush. 3T walked back into the bathroom and decided he'd do the noble thing and sacrifice his hair comb to the hell that awaited in Ashley's hair. He walked back out, and Percy had all pardon him what? And Percy had already gone into full mother mode. She couldn't help it when people looked bad. She couldn't help it when people looked bad. After all, image was everything. Ashley just sat there as Pinwheel used a lint brush to freshen up their sweatpants. And by the time 3T had made it to the couch with the comb Percy had procured, and by the time 3T had made it to the couch with the comb, Percy had procured a new orange shirt for Ashley to wear. Percy handed 3T the old pink shirt and told him to go wash it. So 3T did. He went through the kitchen and out the door onto the little balcony. They weren't the only they were only on the second floor, so the view wasn't great but it was nice to be outside. Besides, the apartment complex was on a hill, and this balcony looked down the hill, so the height difference was noticeable. The streets were bustling with almost no one. The streets were bustling with almost no one? The streets were bustling with almost no one, seeing as it was snooze day. 3T pulled out the tub that they kept under the small glass table on the balcony, filled it with hot water from the rainbow-colored hose attached to the spigot with googly eyes, and began to soak the shirt. The fact that Polly Gary Ashley had showed up at their house still baffled him. 
but he knew that Percy wasn't going to let any discussion start until they were clean. We're getting Ashley unclothed and washed. Don't come in for a bit, Percy hollered from inside. Ashley and looked- interjecting. Wait, interjecting. interjecting. Uh, I think that you copied the um, just the text as it as it is and didn't go into the source code, so you're missing the uh, the chapter breaks. This is a chapter break. Oh, okay. There we go. Just Let's- letting you know. Thank you. We will stop here for a second and check the chat and drink water. So, mm-hmm. yes. uh, you will have to do that again because I will forget. Uh, uh, there is not that. another one, so you're good. Oh, perfect. Uh, preferring felt sherm to me, regular sherm is a wise choice. Given the option, like this is much <laughs> better. This is this is what we're all here for, everybody. Mm-hmm. Let's see. All right. Yep. Been a while since I watched the stream. People are chilling out. Cool. All right. Let's keep it going. Now that the chapter break has ended, Ashley looked much better. They looked normal. Uh, well, they still looked like they had been hit by a train. But they didn't look homeless. So that was a step up. Ashley and Percy sat on the couch. And 3T sat on the ground across the coffee table from them. Pinwheel had prepared them all tea and turned off the fans because Ashley had complained about it being too cold. The silence was uncomfortable, but 3T and Percy were okay waiting for Ashley to be comfortable speaking. 3T and Percy weren't talkers anyways. There was a comfort about being able to go around and not needing to talk to each other, just enjoying each other's presence. This wasn't enjoyable, but it was more acceptable for them than Ashley probably knew. I... Ashley began to croak out. Their voice had all the bumps and ridges of someone who had just woken up, but their exhaustion implied they had been awake for days. I first want to apologize for not changing it. Percy looked confused, but understood that Ash but understood that Ashley was aimed at 3T and chose not to interrupt. It it's not that I didn't mean to, I I forgot to, or I didn't have the motivation to. I don't know. I don't know why I didn't. Ashley stared down at their tea. I, I haven't been able to tell anyone because the first person I wanted to apologize to was Brainy. Ashley swallowed loudly and then let out a small jet of air. And I can't do that, so... Percy patted Ashley on the back and Ashley... And Ashley mouthed, I'm okay, in response. 3T frowned. Well, I'm conflicted. Because I can't say it's okay. Ashley nodded. It wasn't an okay thing to do. I knew that in the moment, but you convinced me of a way in which it would have been okay. But you didn't come through on that promise. And it was a big enough of a... And it was a big enough promise that an apology alone will not make things right. If anything will make things right. 3T breathed in sharply. But that is not to say that I hold it against you. I think that in this sense, you are, in the derogatory sense of the word, immature. I think that maybe you got into the business world too early. That maybe you had some more growing up to do. And that's unfortunate, Ashley. That's really unfortunate. 3T sipped his tea. But the mistake was made. And you won't make it again. And you are apologizing. And you are acknowledging what you did wrong. And you're clearly really beating yourself up over it. None of this makes what you did okay. But I get it. Ashley looked up and made eye contact. You will grow up, and you will become a better person, and that's life. There are things that you do, mistakes you make in the course of life, some worse than others, and you'll have to live with them. I don't think you're a bad person, Ashley. 3T reached across the table and touched Ashley's hand. And I forgive you. Ashley looked down at 3T's hand on theirs, and their eyes began to well up. I'm 
I'm just, I'm just so. Tears began to fall into their tea. <laughs> this wouldn't have happened if, if. Ashley took their hand, not holding tea, and placed it on their face. If I hadn't. 3T quickly set down his tea and circled the table to kneel next to Ashley and put a hand on their knee. It's not your fault that Brainy did what he did. That's nobody's fault but his own. You can't take responsibility for that. Don't take responsibility for that. You'll only hurt yourself. But no buts. You are never responsible for what other people do outside of your influence. Brainy was in the middle of nowhere, on his own, doing what he did. You can't let yourself feel responsible for that, Ashley. That's the worstest worst thing you could ever do to yourself, Ashley. It's the worst. Ashley nodded and continued to spill tears. 3T looked to Percy, who then got up and cleared her and 3T's tea. 3T made his way to the side of the couch where Percy was just sitting, sat in her spot, and rubbed Ashley's knee. Ashley wiped their eyes, and in doing so looked up at 3T. In that moment, 3T opened his arms, and Ashley quickly came in for a hug. 3T rubbed their back and gave them a shoulder to cry into. Three weeks of this, he thought to himself. Oh, gosh. Ashley's sobs filled the apartment, and Percy looked concerned at the two huggers. 3T looked up from the embrace for a second to mouth, More tea, please which Percy nodded and ducked behind a corner. To which Percy nodded and ducked behind a corner. I... I wish Brainy was here! Ashley cracked out. 3T furrowed his brow. Ashley wished Brainy was here? Why? What would they stand to gain from that? Closure, 3T supposed, but that was it. There was no reason for Brainy to come back. Brainy had done a horrible thing. Brainy had done several horrible things. Brainy had acted irrationally, out of line, and he had abused Wondertainment's leniency. He had played them. A company that had only ever done good for him. A community of people who had done nothing but supported and loved him, and he took them for granted? And used their pro premises? And used their premises for monstrous activities. He killed people. Kids! And for that, Brainy was unforgivable. Forsaken. Forbidden from ever coming back. 3T clenched Ashley's back, taken now with his own emotion, taken now with his own emotions. I don't. And at that very moment, the apartment complex's buzzer sounded again. No! <laughs> No! <laughs> Not now! So that was a very short chapter. That was a very short chapter. But also... No! No! Okay. Well, Thought? we are coming to the finale. Mm-hmm. And what else did I think was going to be happening except for that? <laughs> It was a foregone conclusion. Oh. Oh. Ugh. Blah. Any fun notes for the audience about this one? Background intel? Um, not really. I think it pretty much speaks for itself. I will say that I really wanted to get uh, Polly and 3T's like, subplot back in the forefront resolved because we already had... Uh, a chapter that was from 3T's perspective. No, it was from Polly's perspective, sorry. Um, earlier on. That was talking about how she was going to change it for the presentation. So that's why I had the scene in the beginning of this one that's explaining what happened there. Um, and that's it. Really. We are set up for the thrilling conclusion. The thrilling conclusion next week. Stay tuned. Guys, it's been almost a four-month journey of Vendafriend. It has. Are you guys it might even be straight end? up a four-month uh, journey because of uh, Sundays that we've had to skip. Wow. Yeah. Did, and yeah. 
That means we started this. Did we start this before quarantine? Yes, we did. We do this the whole time. Yep. Freaking A, man. Freaking A. Mm hmm. All right. Well, I guess we're cutting this stream early because we had a nice short yep. chapter. Uh, do yep. you, any guess on how long the last chapter is? Is it a small, medium, uh, large? The next chapter, I mean, there's a very easy way to test this. Let me pull open both chapters and see how different the uh, the scroll bar size is. Wait, While wait, he's no. doing this, I'll just point out that everything will be okay. Chapter 14 is currently at plus 31 on the wiki if you wanted to go upvote because you enjoyed the story. It looks like it's going to be a little less than twice as long if the scroll bar is very proportional. All right. Man, thrilling conclusion. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Guys, this is a freaking sensitive microphone. Your whispering does nothing. Looks not clear. <laughs> I mean, Sorry. it sounded somewhat clear. <laughs> In any case, I think that's a great time to leave. <laughs> Run away! Run away! We've been revealed! All right. See ya next week where I hope to have a fairly long uh, podcast, not because the chapter is long, but because we will have a lot to say. Probably. Tune in next week for the thrilling conclusion of Venda Friend. All right. We'll see you later, Dark Stuff. Bye. See Everybody ya. In the, Everybody in the chat, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us tonight. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed the reading and the hangouts. Uh, one more time, I will flash the Site 42 P.O. box up. So that if you wish to mail something strange to Sherm, this is your opportunity. Say goodbye, Tiny Felt Sherm. Goodbye! Hope you guys have a good night. We'll see you next time. Cheers. And that brings us to the end of our evening's broadcast. This has been another anomalous broadcast from Site 42. We hope you enjoyed our broadcast, and we'll see you in the next video.